It's a new day, it's a new tournament, and it's a new batch of upgrades for Cheesecake the One Pound Combat Robot. So far, my drive is working fine, and my electronics organization is good, so these latest upgrades are all about the weapon. The first upgrade was to battle harden my weapon motors, which involved filling in the gaps between the magnets with epoxy. This helps to hold the magnets in place during impacts, which was a problem at my last tournament. The second upgrade was to actually balance my weapon bars, which required a prop balancer to check if one side was heavier than the other, and then a belt sander to grind off any excess weight on the heavier side. The final upgrade was to lower the bushing which supports the end of my weapon motor shaft. This reduces the risk of the shaft bending during impacts by giving my weapon less leverage against the bushing. With any luck, this should allow me to use the same weapon motors over and over again, rather than swapping them out every few fights. With the weapon system locked and loaded, Cheesecake and I headed back to New Jersey for another tournament organized by the Garden State Combat Robotics League. This tournament was held outdoors at a fairground, which meant we got a lot of awesome spectators. For this tournament, each robot in the Antweight bracket was given a preliminary match to determine its seating in the tournament bracket. For me, this was a fight against Lobot, one of the wedgiest wedgebots that ever wedged. Normally, wedgebots have a massive advantage over horizontal spinners, but with my new flat fork attachment, the Sweet Tooth, I should be able to slip under his wedge and either get a good bite on him, or lift him up and flip him over as my weapon bounces off his wedge. That's the hope anyway. Let's see if it works. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Don't drive into the wall, dummy. You can only pin an opponent for 10 seconds at a time, but I was able to get away before that. That's the hit I needed. Not my fault. Someone put a wall in my way. This was a decisive victory for Cheesecake. Lobot's wedge is very big and very scary, but it is made out of aluminum, which Cheesecake does have the ability to bite into with a decent amount of success. And that was Cheesecake's preliminary fight. Not bad. My driving could have been better, but not bad. Now, because I won my preliminary fight against Lobot, I received a high seed for the tournament bracket, which meant that my first official tournament match was against... Lobot? Okay then, round two. Three, two, one, and go.
I'm trying not to get re-entangled here, but there's a lot hanging off of Lobot. And you show the control motion. I'm seeing one wheel and you're sort of spinning in place. This unfortunate circumstance, 75 seconds to go. G-Stick is still going for more width. The more damage is gone, those tires will shoot up in proper fast. 10, 9, 8, that's a tap out. All right, I managed to grab another victory over a wedge bot. Lobot is designed to be squishy and resilient, which is usually a good strategy, but Cheesecake's weapon tip is designed to be very sharp with a positive rake angle, which allows me to rip and tear into soft opponents, rather than simply punching them if I had a blunt weapon. But let the record show that all wedges are still scary, squishy or not. My next fight was against an undercutter kit robot named Under Construction. I just had to complain about scary wedges, didn't I? Now I have to fight a scary undercutter, which is something I haven't actually prepared for. I simply resigned myself to see what happens when I eventually had to fight one. So, let's see what happens. Three, two, I'm not really sure how to approach him, so I spend a little too much time dancing around instead of just going for it. After this hit, I shut down my weapon for fear of ripping out my own guts, so from here it was just a pushing match. The goal is to show the judges that I'm being more aggressive in the engagements and that I have more control over my robot. It's a good thing my rubber band tires are so grippy or I'd have no chance right now. Cheesecake won the judges' decision by just one point on each of their scorecards, so this was barely a victory for Cheesecake, and I think that's the most I could have asked for given the damage Under Construction did. Under Construction opened up my chassis by shearing off one of the screw heads holding Cheesecake together, and then he smashed the thin wall between my weapon and my internals. In exchange, Cheesecake delivered a direct hit to Under Construction's weapon motor and disabled it completely. To be perfectly honest, if I had been the referee, I might have considered this an exposed battery and declared under construction to be the winner. 
but I'm not the referee, and I'm not sure to what extent I need to declare my own damage. I've never had this happen before. I did, however, explain this to the other driver, telling him that he may well have deserved the victory instead of me. Fortunately, he was just glad it was a good fight, which it was, and I made sure to give him my mangled armor and broken standoff as a trophy. My next fight was against Nomad, a classic four-wheel drive vertical spinner. The last time we fought, Cheesecake's drive was still very fragile, so I ended up crab walking for most of the fight. This time, however, Cheesecake not only had springy wheels to protect his drive motors, but also the sweet tooth to get under Nomad's new steel wedge. Let's see if it's enough. I guess I won? I was confused why the driver of Nomad tapped out after that hit, until he showed me this. Ouch! When our weapons collided, his weapon got bent and caught on his frame, while mine stayed flat. This is great news for Cheesecake, because it indicates that my weapon was spinning faster than Nomad's, so I was able to hit the side of his weapon before he could hit the side of mine. Don't let anyone tell you that a horizontal spinner cannot win the tip speed battle against a vertical spinner. With this victory over Nomad, Cheesecake was heading into the finals with an undefeated record, where he would face the winner of the loser's bracket, and that winner was... Nomad? I am having the weirdest case of deja vu today. Alright then, it's Cheesecake vs. Nomad, round two, for the Antweight final. That was a great fight! Cheesecake just couldn't resist the delicious taste of those exposed wheels. And Nomad got a nice big bite of Cheesecake early on. But my armor survived, and so did my robot, which meant that Cheesecake took first place in the Antweight bracket. Now, I have to admit, this was not my strongest performance. It was not clear that I deserved to win my fight against Under Construction, and I didn't even have to fight Dulce de Lucha, who brought a special attachment specifically for Cheesecake. But hey, there are more tournaments coming soon, so stay tuned for more Mechanical Mayhem, and thanks for watching.